everyone, it's Erin here from Erin Elizabeth Designs, back with another floss tube. If you are new to my channel, welcome. This is where I sit down and talk to you all about my designs that I do in the cross stitch world, um, finishing of them, show you guys what I've got done, what's coming up, um, just a place where I like to sit down and chat, show you the different haul that I'm picking up, all kinds of things. So, um, and if you are returning thank you for choosing to spend time with me yet again <laughs> i really appreciate all of my subscribers and everyone who continues to watch like and comment it really does mean a lot to me um, i love reading through the comments i try my best to get back to the ones that have questions if i've missed something please don't ever hesitate to ask again um, i really do try my best to get around and answer everything that needs to be answered and um, if there's no questions, then I usually just heart the comment. Um, I've read it. It means a lot to me. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to reply all the time. But I, when I do have time, I try to go through and um, chat with you guys a little bit more. So thank you for everybody for being here. Um, I see you and I appreciate you. So um, today I have a lot of finishes that have already been released for the spring season. I just wanted to share with you guys. Um, some have been shown in my other previous videos. Most of these actually have been. Um, but I wanted to do a face-to-face -face video because they were tutorials and camera down. So I thought I would just come and share them with you if tutorials and watching finishing videos aren't really your thing you can catch them here so I know some of my videos um, I say that they're tutorials but that's a very loose term <laughs> for me I don't necessarily always have a plan when I'm going into finishing sometimes I do like with my spring bunny um, I already knew how this was going to be finished so it was just a matter of like picking the fabrics and trims, but I always do that like live in the moment as I'm doing the videos. Um, I just film myself doing the finishes. So I don't really ever have like a set plan per se. Um, and I know like I just finished releasing my Halloween block party tutorial and that one did get a little long. I think it, I trimmed it down as best I could and it was still um, an hour and 50 minutes. So I'm sorry if you're not into the long videos, please don't feel like you have to watch them. Um, they're there for you if you want them. And the one thing with YouTube that is really nice you might not be aware of is in the settings, you can go and um, switch it to like a fast watch speed. So you can do like 1.5, um, two times, and it'll speed it up. So you don't have to just like fast forward through it to catch different p bits and pieces. You can watch it in like double time speed and it'll go through the whole process a lot quicker. So that might be something that um, speaks to you for those longer kind of videos when you really want to see the full process or see something come together but it's a long video like that i know because i'm doing it like in the moment and trying to make decisions on the fly um sometimes i'm a little bit slower to figure out where i'm gonna go with the direction or what i want to do exactly and um it's just my style it's my process I putting it out there if you want to watch it great and if you don't that's totally fine too um, anyways just to give you kind of an idea of those videos what you can expect so I've got lots of things planned coming out I have a ton of footage to go through and edit for new projects coming so there will be more videos coming um, it is a process video editing and trimming them down and getting out all the extra bits that don't necessarily need to be there. So um, I'm working on a few new ones. So keep an eye out for those if you're liking those other videos that I've put out. Um, and yeah, other than that, let's get into what I have to share today. So I've got um, a few of my newer spring designs. Like I said, I will show you the Halloween block party um, collection so far that I have finished so that you guys can see those um, a little bit in a different perspective. I think my lighting and everything is better in this um, 
direction of filming. And then I've got a sale to talk to you guys about today and a couple giveaways and a little bit of haul. So let's jump in and get started. So this is the Spring Bunny. I'm not going to go over a ton on these because um, I did go over like the details in the finishing videos and stuff. Um, but I just thought I would share them with you in this kind of a format. So again, these are um, finished on the Paisleys and Polka Dots um, finishing frames. These come unfinished. So with this one, this was just spray painted um, white with like a white chalk spray paint. So any kind of a, depending what finish you like, if you like, this is a matte finish. Um, so if you like a matte, um, a satin, a glossy, you can choose that. Whatever color you want, you can also do it in any color you want. Um, but these come unfinished, you glue them together. Um, they're so easy. Uh, Julie from Paisley's and Pol Polka Dots always provides um, a little sheet of paper instructions in each package um, project that you purchase. And um, they're very detailed instructions, exactly what to do. She's got lots of um, video tutorials as well that you can go and follow to see different techniques of how to put them together, different painting um, and finishing ways that she does for different projects. So awesome, awesome instructions, really easy to follow and do if you're not familiar with something like this. But th these are just absolutely beautiful so fun I love this one because it really reminds me of like an Easter egg um, it's just a very fresh fun design for spring so that's spring bunny and then <clears throat> this is the matching on the round so this is bloom grow blossom and I do just have these on um, magnets on these boards because I plan on doing lots of different designs that will fit these frames. So if you do invest in these frames, you can definitely um, guarantee that I'm going to be doing other designs for different seasons and different, um, just in general, different designs for them. So it is a good investment um, if you do like my designs. So that is Bloom, Grow, Blossom. It's just such a fun, fresh design. Love the colors. Um, beautiful. So those were really fun to do. Um, that's the second collection that I have done for those finishing boards. And then we have, next up we have, um, Quack Quack Honk. And I had so much fun designing this one. So the two little ducks waddling along in their gumboots for spring and then they've got the goose behind them which was just I this one came from the idea of doing like duck duck goose but instead of putting duck duck goose I went quack quack honk which I thought was just such a fun play on it um, with them being in gumboots it's really playful um, just some really soft pretty colors for spring love this it came together exactly how I envisioned it so I was, could not be happier with this one and then I finished it with um, the green moss it, this one's called mossy from lady dot creates chenille hand dyed chenille so I do have again a tutorial video on this one that I just showed me um, trying the poly pellets for the first time and then um, doing this finish on the back. So I just wanted to try something different um, for a finish and I decided to sew up this quick little floral and put that on the back to cover the hole in the back. Um, I love how it came together and yeah I think I'll definitely be thinking of different ways like doing a little more patchwork um, with fabrics to c cover the backing as opposed to just doing the felt. I love the felt too, don't get me wrong. The felt is like a really quick and easy cut out a fun shape, do a square, do some decorative stitching on it and put that over um, the hole in the back. But this was just a, something fun to do that was a little bit different. So, and that fabric could not be more perfect to go with. Um, not only match this green perfectly, 
but it also matches um, the design as well, I feel. So I love that one. I know this one has been super popular. Everybody else is loving it just as much, and that makes me so happy. So anybody who's stitching it or has purchased it and um, was excited about it, I heard some really cool stories about it, um, what the significant meaning was for other people, and that's always fun to hear too. So I love this one, um, Quack Quack Honk. Just think it's the perfect design for spring and Easter. You can have it out a little bit longer um, because it's not um, straight up Easter. So, um, but I love that one. So I'm so happy that you guys love it just as much. And Polly Pellets for the win. I love the feel and the way it kind of, um, it's not as poofy. So what I've noticed with my pillows with the poly fill is that they get really like when you cram it in because you've got to really cram it in there. I have noticed I've got some t um, today that I brought some of my um, designs from last year that the, after a year they're just like a little bit more deflated and that's just with the poly fiber. So with the poly fiber I just find that they kind of do deflate a little bit after time. Um, so I'm interested to see, I mean, obviously the pellets, they're not going to deflate like a, the fiber does. But I was interested to see how they would um, fit and feel and all that kind of stuff. And I love it. Um, I often find when I'm doing a pillow with the fiber, it like puffs out so much, like this way and it kind of like pulls your design in like this so I always find it kind of goes like the more you cram in there it starts pulling your pillow in and poofing it out whereas these pellets kind of give it that like more of a flat feel and look and it fills it out kind of e more even in a sense and you're not getting that design like rolling on the um pillow as much so so far that's kind of my big takeaway with it is that I love the way it kind of um, flattens that pillow a little bit so you can really still keep your margins close to the design and it's not like rolling it um, where you lose half your design once it's in the bowl so I love that um, like I said I did a video on that that one was a bit of a shorter because I just did the inside um, and I go over kind of a little bit more on how I how I finished this one but I did the four seams sewed them up with a slit in the back on the pillow and then um, I hand stitched the chenille trim on there and then you just kind of like fluff it up to hide that um, thread that kind of goes over top of the chenille and I just used um, the green and the grass because these are such a perfect match so I just used my DMC thread to put this on around so worked out really good that was my first time hand sewing um, chenille on a pillow and the part I had the hardest time with was the corners just to try and keep that from like not rolling off and to tack it in without like losing my corner so that was the um, the trickiest part and then ending it I put a little glue on the end of my chenille so it doesn't like fray off but that was it okay um what else do we have to share I have the Halloween block party so like I said I just did a video finishing tutorial for that one it's a little bit long so I just wanted to share them with you guys here if you kind of like <laughs> decided not for you. Um, I wanted you guys to see just the collection anyways because they're too cute not to show again. So um, this is the 12 part Halloween series that I have going on with Crazy Annie Stitching. I will link everything in the description box. Um, for you guys in regards to it. You can still pop over to Crazy Annie's Stitching and join in or get some of the charts that have already been released. Um, they are with her until September is when the um, club ends. So it started in October of last year, 2023, and runs till September of 2024. So 12-part series, we've got um, five here today. The sixth was released in March, um, and 
so on and so on. So we still have a good ways to go on these. But this is the first one, which is Frank's house. Such a cute little um, Frankenstein house. So I love the details in this. So we have the windows here that are his eyes, the little light above the door, which mimics his nose, and then this grate of a window in the door, which is supposed to be like his little mouth. And then these are like his little like stitched up cheeks. That was the intention of it, like to look like, you know, Frankenstein that's got the stitches on his face. And then we've got the bolts on the side of the house here too. And of course some bats and stars to just tie in that um, feeling of Halloween. So in the series I did um, six little houses intermixed with... Um, the word art in between. So some fun play on words, uh, signs in between. And it can be all stitched as a 12 piece chart as well. The PDF for the outside frame of if you wanna stitch them all together is available for a free download on my website. I've talked lots about this in other videos, so um, you can go and check out those as well, uh, but they, can be stitched all together as 12. Um, I thought it'd be fun to take them and do them individually to kind of show you a different way of doing it. It's really fun all as one, but I thought let's sh see what we could do because really a 12 part series that started last year for Halloween it runs for a full year. Come Halloween this year, you'll have a whole collection of um, decorative pieces and if you break it apart and do separate finishes then you have like your whole house decorated with Halloween really so I did the six houses on these block finishes I in the tutorial go over all the details they're finished on a canvas like a wide frame canvas so um, they stand really nice all on their own but I wanted to do them like this so that I could have a little decorative um, village of them so this is the second of the houses and this is um candy house so you got your little black cat and of course it's a candy corn looking house and then your bats and some fun whimsical trees so i just like how cute is that going to be right as like a little halloween village with some extra decorative halloween decor in between so i can't wait to see i kind of stuck with a black and white and orange theme for finishing on these um and then the third one so far that's been released is ghost house so in that one that fabric plays off perfectly off of that design and I love that. So again, the windows mimic its eyes and then the other one above the door is its mouth. And like, it's just such a fun whimsical collection. So I really hope you guys are enjoying that. If you've decided to join um, along for the series, um, like I say, you can still get in touch with Crazy Annie's stitching there and get your hands on some of these charts if they speak to you. So this one I made into like a little hanging sign. I just did double sided um, mat boards with it. I'm here for the booze, super cute. And then this one, I just, I love this one, how it came out. So fright this way. And this board, I had no idea exactly what I was doing when I started this. You'll see that in my <laughs> finishing tutorial. I've already had one person comment. I did not think that was going to come together. And <laughs> she said, surprisingly, it did. And it's so cool. So I agree. Um, a lot of the times, like, I don't know. It's a, tr a lot of trial and error, right? Uh, but this one was a win. So it's always fun when you have kind of an idea or want to envision something and it actually comes to life. So I wanted it to look like, you know, like a decrepit, rundown, haunted house feel. And I really feel like I was able to capture that. So these are just broken popsicle sticks um, attached to this board I had on hand. I go over all the details. Painting, <clears throat> I just took black, white, and brown 
and just dabbed a little of each color back and forth, you know, like mixed it, mixed a little more of this, and then a lot of times dry brushing, so dabbing most of the paint off and then layering that color on, and it was just a kind of back and forth of getting that color just right. So, and then sanded down some of the edges to give it some more depth and interest, but I could not be happier with how that one came together. Totally, totally the way I was planning on doing, like the look I was planning on getting from it. So um, I've already got some other ideas um, for decorative decor to go with this. So keep an eye out for some more crafting videos coming um, because I'm gonna have some fun getting d decor pieces to go with my um, village and these signs so that when Halloween comes, my house is gonna be ready. My kids are gonna love it. <laughs> I'm I'm so excited. I don't normally decorate a lot for Halloween. Like I do um, our front door and outside, but inside I haven't really done a ton of like Halloween decorating. I usually do like, you know, fun napkins and straws for the kids, but this is gonna be like, I'm going all out this year, Halloween everywhere. So <laughs> I see why it's such a popular um, season for stitching, so. Okay, now that's all the catch up on the stitching, um, my newer releases that I have out. I have more coming and the next collection is going to be <laughs> really fun. I can't wait to share that with you guys. Um, but for right now, um, the newest of new is the sal that we have going on. So I was lucky enough, um, Helen D and Carla from Cobweb Corner uh, approached me and asked if I would be interested in doing a stitch along, a sal. Um, and I said, yes, absolutely. So I got to put together a fun chart for you guys. Um, Helen D is hosting it. So I will have all the information in the description box um, where to get signed up. Um, both of them have released floss tubes talking all about the sal, um, giving you all the information and details. Um, before we get into all of that here, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the design. So this is what I came up with. It's called Bee Farm. And this is going to be the stitch along with Helen D. So... I wanted to show you guys a little bit more of the chart up close and personal. So this big, beautiful bee in the center, absolutely gorgeous. Love how this one came together. The florals, you've got a little bit of the bee honeycomb in here, local honey. Um, this finishing board display, um, it's a frame, sorry, I guess not a board, but it's a stand-up finishing piece. Um, this is from Paisley's and Polka Dots. Um, I had it for a while now and I have been envisioning, I have lots of, I have lots of other older bead designs that would fit on this one as well. Um, this is a 70 by 70 chart, stitch count. So that's, I had got this as like a I'm going to finish one of my other charts onto it, um, but I never did. And then I designed this and I was like, this is the perfect finish. So I'm so excited. It came together absolutely perfect. I tried to pick up this bl beautiful blue color in um, this for the house. So this is <clears throat> just a magnet again on um, here. So you can switch it out if you want. I mean, if you wanted to glue it on too and just have this always, that's fine. Um, but it, it comes with the black, well, the backer here. Again, it's an unfinished wood frame from Paisley's and Polka Dots. So it comes with very good district, uh, dis <laughs> distri <laughs> comes with very good instructions that sh um, 
Julie has shared different color options, like the way she has it painted and shown. She's got all the information of like the supplies needed for that. While I was putting this together, I did film a video for it. It is very lengthy because it's a painting one. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of like waiting in between and I have a lot of editing to do on it, but there will be a video for you guys is exactly how I did mine. So the white, I, Okay, before I get into too many details on the board, um, the stitch. Let's get back to the stitch. Bee Farm. And it is a 70 by 70 stitch count. It's all DMC thread. There's nine colors to it. Um, Carla has, from Cobweb Corner, has the charts. She has both PDF and print options available. This um, Sal Stitch Along starts April 23rd. Helen will have the all the information there as to how she's going to be running the Stitch Along. You're going to want to go and watch her video on it. There's an opportunity to win one of these boards right now. Um, she's got all the information over there. Um, the charts will be available with Cobweb Corner um, until May 7th. So if you don't start right away, you have time to get it from her. She, okay, so this chart normally retails for $8, and she's going to have it available for $7.15. So $7.15. Um, the PDF comes with your black and white and color chart included, and then the print charts are just black and white like my charts normally are so you can expect the same kind of chart that you would normally get um, from me where whichever way you're used to purchasing it um, Carla from Cobweb Corner has a floss tube as well that she shares all about the cell and the information so again in the description box click along and go find her over there um, that is where you're gonna sign up for the stitch along, your chart, if you need the thread, she can get that together for you. Whatever um, information you have, they're gonna have the answers for you. You can always reach out to me too and I will help guide you along the way, but in order to sign up for the stitch along and get your pattern, you're gonna have to head over to Carla's um, Cobweb Corner to get that. Okay, um, and Helen D is the one hosting the stitch along. So super fun. Um, cannot wait to see everybody signing it. Or, <sighs> cannot wait to see everybody stitching it. And um, I know that there's a lot of people that have already said that they've signed up and that is wonderful. You guys are loving this chart and that makes me so happy. So B Farm, your local honey, um, this board again could not be more perfect so I'm this is I did the crackle paint on this so it's actually got like a green underpaint with a blue over top that's crackled so you can kind of see the different tone to it and then the white has like a brown underneath for the crackle so I love that look it just came together really cool um, you don't have to do crackle if you really just love the blue, uh, do the blue painting. The crackle is a bit of a process just in the sense that you paint one coat of paint, let it dry, you paint the crackle, you give it an hour, and then you come back and you do your final top coat paint. So it does take, you're painting it three times as opposed to maybe once or twice. It does take a little bit more time. But again, these boards are so easy to put together. Um, the, the instructions are wonderful and you just need a little bit of glue and you can put it right together super easy. So um, you can also, there's, I mean, this would be really cute as a pillow finish. It would be cute on any, like in a frame, any kind of other display that you normally do. 
but I mean the possibilities are endless so I hope you guys love this design I know so many of you already do and I cannot wait to see um, everybody starting it all together it's gonna be so fun to see everybody starting it at the same time too um, I love stitch alongs for that reason so um, yes head on over um, to check out Helen D um, and see what she to get yourselves in for the draw for one of these for sure um but yeah if you have any questions like i say please don't hesitate to ask you can comment below and i'm more than happy to answer more questions in regards to that if it, that finish size is about of the stitch is just about five inches by five inches um yeah it's all dmc oh i forgot to tell you that it is stitched on 28 count light taupe lugana but you can stitch this on anything um any kind of neutral the there's just the littlest bit of white in the um, petals here of this flower and those are um, b5200 so usually that shows up pretty good on most like your mushroom and stuff like that but um vintage country mocha would be an excellent choice for this um, a gray fabric would be great. I mean, you could do it on anything really. So I can't wait to see what you guys choose. I always love to see the different fabrics that people choose and how different the design ends up looking and coming out just by changing the fabric. That's always so fun to see. So there, I'm not, there is a hashtag and I forgot to, um, I'm pretty sure Helen started a hashtag. I will put it right here <laughs> okay so um the other thing i wanted to touch base with that i keep forgetting is just cross stitch <laughs> um lots of people have shared the spring edition and thank you to everybody who has and a lot of you have already been um, have already seen this and have already been stitching it but I had a featured design in it um, I was lucky enough to be asked to do a chart for this spring edition and you think I would have marked it off or at least there's probably a pretty permanent fold in here come on Erin anyways I was lucky enough to get asked if I would do a chart for this and I absolutely said yes, because like bucket list, being a designer. Um, so I was able to come up with a spring design and work with um, Chantel from 141 Designs. Um, she asked if I would do a chart. So if you have the spring edition and you did not realize that, take another look <laughs> but this is my hello spring um just such a fun design just to get ready for spring so you got your birdhouse a little bird in there your shovel you're getting your garden ready so i love the freshness of it um so many of you have done it already stitched up and have shared it so thank you for doing that and showing it to me um a lot of people have changed the colors on it to suit their like spring favorite colors and stuff like that i love seeing that as well so thank you to everybody who's already um seen it and shared it and stitched it and enjoyed it like love that i love that so super fun um lots of other floss tubers have been sharing this as well and have called me out and said like hey look if you didn't know so i really appreciate that it was really fun to watch along and um see everybody's reaction to that design so that was the um spring edition for just cross stitch so and i of course am way behind everybody else on mentioning that because life happens <laughs> so um anyways i thought today too i would just show some of my 
other spring ones here that I have um, from last year's spring finishes. I don't have these like in a display or anything right now. They are taken apart so I can show you. But this is my Spring Smalls collection. So I had Spring Smalls 1, 2, and 3. So this is Spring Smalls 1. And this is, they, the two charts come together. So this is Bunny Bait. It's got just a couple real fun carrots there, a cute little bunny, some carrots on the ground. I just love this. Um, this one I finished on a little gardening stake, so I put it in like a um, jar full of carrots. And then this one, carrots, 25 cents. And that one I had just on a little um, box, like a little... Um, basket box thing <laughs> with a display. I have photos of these on my Instagram as well. I will um, maybe post new updated ones of this year's decorations. So, and um, that spring collection or spring collection one and spring collection two is this one, the hop with the little bunny and look at those little Easter eggs. So cute. Got some little flowers along the top. Love that. This one I just finished into a little pillow. And again, so did a different kind of like patch on the back there with some fabric. Um, and then this is the second one that comes in that collection, Fresh Flowers. Love it. And I got the little floral buttons here. And again, a little cover for the back. And then spring collection three was the Cottontail Farms with the little brown bunny. So cute. I love this long skinny pillow. It's, I just love doing pillows like this. And then the little wrap around here with the button and a little leaf, wood leaf. So cute. So Cottontail Farms. And then this one is Farm Fresh Eggs. So I like having the different shapes because this one sits like in a bowl full of eggs with that sticking out. And then the other one is, you know, a little bit longer of a display. But you can you could easily have these in the same display and you would see the stitches still. So I like that idea of it. Um, but yeah, that's spring collection one, two and three. I just thought I'd share those ones with you guys again. And um I am going to do a giveaway for them. So they're going to be PDF um, charts. If you are interested in the comment section, put um, a one if you're interested in spring collection one. Put a two if you're interested in spring collection two. And put a three if you're interested in spring collection three if you're interested in all of them then do one comma two comma three <laughs> um i don't need there's no because it's a pdf file there's no it's open to everyone um i don't need to ask for any mailing address so there's no age requirement um but please don't say giveaway freebie all those you know words that um, get all the spammers in the comments. So um, a one, two, or three for those. And then I'm going to do four. I'm going to do um, a PDF of Quack Quack Honk. So if you're interested in this one, put a four for Quack Quack Honk. Again, it'll be a PDF chart. Um, and then we'll do five we're going to do, whoopsies, <laughs> Spring Bunny. So if you're interested in this one, put a five. And that's for Spring Bunny. So one, two, three, four, or five. And again, if you're interested in being entered for all of them, please go ahead and do that. Um, and I will draw for those by the time I do my next video. Which I have a release coming out on Monday. Today is Thursday. So it'll probably be about a week before I get back. So 
Um, you have till my next video comes out, though. Uh, I'll announce it in the next video. So I hope you guys enjoyed those. Um, yeah, and that's all I have for stitching to show you. I just have a little bit of haul today. I was really hoping that I would have a bit more, but my package is not quite here yet. And um, yeah, unfortunately it's coming from the States. I tried to get this chart in Canada and they ran out. So I had to place an order. It's coming. And it's not here yet, but there's a stitch along starting on um, April 1st, which is my friend Stephanie's birthday, the New England Stitcher. If you're not watching her or following her, her on Instagram, I recommend you do. She's wonderful. She's got lots of beautiful stitching, sewing. Um, she does amazing quilts and project keepers and stuff. Like, go check her out. She's got a floss tube and Instagram absolutely wonderful but it is her birthday on april 1st it's also my grandmother's birthday and she's chosen um the strength and dignity chart from the proper stitcher annie the proper stitcher and i ordered mine and it's just not quite here yet so hopefully i'm not i'm not gonna hold my breath because it's the long weekend um the mail is not going to be moving so i have a feeling mine will probably show up on tuesday and I'll just have to start a day or so late. But um, I still, I really want to start on the first because it's like, it's her birthday, it's my grandma's birthday, and it's like the perfect chart combination of the two. Um, so it means a lot to Stephanie and it just, it really does speak to me and my grandma and like, my grandma loves pink and uh, anyways, we'll see. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, I think it pretty much only has today to make it though. So, uh, I don't, I think I'm out of luck. Oh well, I will think of something to do for stitching for them on the first. Um, but yes, um, I met Stephanie through the Jingle Ball, which was wonderful. It was my first time going to the Jingle Ball. It was so much fun. Um, I did the speed dating and went in stitching rooms and it was on the Sunday. I kind of um, went into the one room and found some familiar faces and just kind of stayed put for the day. And we had such a blast. It was so much fun. So um, I've made some really amazing friends in the community through it. And I love the idea of these online um, areas and avenues where we get to sit down and stitch with people and connect over a passion of ours. So it has been wonderful. Um, some of my other friends that you should go and follow or watch their floss tubes if you are not is Brandy and Emma from B&E Stitchery. Go follow them. Um, watch their floss tube if you're not. Um, Chris, the camping stitcher, she's wonderful and stitches incredibly fast. She's always got so much stitching to show. So, and she's also a designer herself. So head on over and check out her floss tube if you're not already. Um, I'm going to forget somebody, aren't I? No, but Helen D is wonderful. East Coast Crafter. Go check her out. I've already told you you need to because of the cell. <laughs> um, oh, the pink stitchers how could i forget jamie and chris um they're wonderful i have had so much fun getting to know these ladies like it is it's a lot of fun so i just i love the idea of the jingle ball and i know there are a few other um online kind of retreat things that happen so keep an eye out for those kinds of things because it really does open the doors to connect with people that you maybe wouldn't normally and next year if you are humming and hawing about the jingle ball i highly recommend going it is super affordable and it's a full weekend of fun um there's lots of different like stitching tables different kinds of people to go in and meet they had wonderful I joined um Kathy's class for her little um jingle around the block 
fi um, finish. So I have that chart. I have it about half stitched. I pulled it out the other day to do some stitching, which was like shocker. I didn't stitch long on it, but I pulled it out, you guys. That's like huge. Um, so I'm hoping to get that done. My goal is to get that done before next year's Jingle Ball. Um, that gives me a lot of time. So I just, I just need to take like, you know, some time to do that, but I hope to get that done. Um, and I, I, so I took part in her class. It was wonderful. She's a wonderful teacher. Um, she's got amazing charts and stuff. And I got to chat with her too, because I ended up in one of the, um, rooms with her so it was lovely to sit down with her and have a bit more of a conversation so um super cool and yeah I would highly recommend it though there's lots of fun that happens there and I cannot wait for next year so if you're going again next year maybe I'll see you guys there and I probably met a bunch of you there um this year because like I said I did the speed dating and um went in and out of um bunch of rooms and kind of sat and chatted with people so it was really fun um yeah anyways haul what else did I get I went to my fabric store I you know what I ended up getting a lot of fabric for the kids <laughs> I did get some for me for project keeper I keep forgetting to bring my project keeper to show you guys I'll show you guys on the next one anyways because I have nothing to show yet for a new one but when I took my quilting class I put together um kind of like a portfolio style project keeper so it's opens up and you know pocket and scissor and project over here anyways I kind of just makeshift my own idea of what I thought would work great for me and then in the process of using it I have decided what's maybe really going to work great for me so I'm on to prototype number two I'm going to start soon so I picked up some fabric for that um I have this package that I picked up um this is the coolest what's the best way to share share with you guys this is such a 70s not like this Erin Okay, such a 70s vibe of fabric. I originally picked it for these because I love stripes. And um, my kids, my little guy especially, loves grasshoppers. So, and we get a ton of them here. Um, so when I saw that, I thought of him. So I'm thinking uh, this is going to be like a summer quilt for the couch. Um, but I just loved the florals and the colors and after I bought it I was like wow this is a really like 70s inspired collection it just reminds me of our cabin um, we had a little cabin growing up that my dad had built with his brother um, for my grandparents for their anniversary one year and it was just a cute little log cabin he built it when he was 19 isn't that incredible um, he was a car ended up getting into carpentry and um, did a lot of log building homes but and his brother did as well but um, our cabin it was nothing like special inside it was just a well it was just a um, rustic cabin and we had all the hand-me-down um, like curtains and bed sheets and everything so um, coffee cups so they were all the milk coffee cups with like the floral designs on them and the curtains were like old ones that were like all these kinds of colors and tablecloths and it was everybody's like old furniture went to um, spend its second life there so it was all very 70s inspired um, colors and stuff inside so this just totally reminds me of like the picnic table um, tablecloth and <laughs> the curtains and that kind of stuff but I I just I love it so it's going to be a really fun one to do um, and I can't wait to see it all come together. I have no, I no like actual pattern or anything picked out. I might just make up my own like 
cut some into different strips and stuff for but yeah it's just such a fun I don't know we'll see what we do but I might just I'm gonna go through some of my books that I got remember I got all those books um and see exactly like look at that and see exactly what I want to do um and then th these ones which is really fun or they're kind of already pieced together to look like they are. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm going to think about it, look through some books, see what I can do with what I have. And um, yeah, we'll see what we do. I will definitely be sharing it with you guys. Isn't that so fun? I love it. I love it so much. So Garden Society. I now have all the little white fluffy all over me don't you love when you go to the fabric store and you wear black and you come out and you've got <laughs> all the little <laughs> white fluffies uh that happens to me all the time they're everywhere now okay and then the last thing here i got is i just got some fabric um like i said i was trying to order <clears throat> i was trying to order my chart for this stitch along um for stephanie's birthday from traditional stitches in canada here they ran out and then they were going to get more and in the meantime i was going to get fabric from another store as well and i was like well i'll see if they have the chart and they did so it's on its way um but it's just it always ends up taking longer than i think it's going to take so um but this is the fabric i got mostly 20 count ada i wanted to get some 20 count ada to try it out i've um, been experimenting with different fabrics and different counts and stuff so for my nashvilles i did 40 count for the first time linen and it was great um but i do i do notice that like late at night it's not what i want to be stitching on um but i loved the small and i love the one th thread so um 36 with one thread is also really nice um so that you know would be an 18 for ada um but i really liked that with the 40 your colors get a little bit more concentrated again um with the one strand so i wanted to try the 20 count um because you know like you can really actually see the holes on it so i think that this would be perfect for um stitching any time of the day but i wanted to try some out so i got some of my favorite colors um vintage country mocha which this one actually doesn't look as like rich and brown in the 20 count it looks a lot more like greeny um normally it's a quite a bit more um well this is that's not vintage that's well this is vintage here this is 14 count vintage country mocha so it's usually a lot more orangey i know this is hard because it's got the orange on it this is also vintage country mocha can you tell it's my fate one of my favorites let's see so like a little bit more like coffee brown to me like more orangey and this is this looks quite green on the um 20 count well it doesn't look as maybe anyway um Vintage Country Mocha, Stone Gray, which this, I love Stone Gray. It's got like a real like purpley pink kind of undertone to it. So um, the Bee Farm would look really cool on this one too because it's got the purpley kind of tone to it. So um, let's see if I can show you guys a little bit like the difference. It's just a little, see it's a little bit deeper of a color but see how it's got more of a like purple tone so that's stone gray um and then we have beige which is lighter kind of i know the glare i'm sorry guys but um light mocha see even against the mocha that one looks more green Oh, so those are all the 20 count Ada's, um, light mocha and beige. Sometimes I feel like beige is really close to mushroom, I feel. Um, and it is sometimes depending on the, the whites, 
a little bit more because it is a bit lighter. Um, usually B5200 is pretty good for most fabric. Um, but if it's like a winter white, sometimes it can get a little ghosty. So something to think about when you're looking for fabrics. Um, and then this is pearl gray. These are all Zweigart fabrics as well. So, and this is a 32 count Lugana in the pearl gray. So that's a really pretty gray too. It's, it's definitely more of a blue tone to it. So I got those, um, to add to my stash for projects to come. Um, and then I picked up my cookbook. So I wanted to have this. Uh, I keep seeing everybody with them and I was having FOMO, so I needed to get it. Um, there are a ton of really cute designs in here. Um, and I mean, I've only looked at this recipe really because yes, that could sell me on it too. It's like anything lemon, I'm here for it. Um, but there is some really cool recipes in here too. And the designs like, oh my gosh, I wish I could show them to you because they're so cute. Um, as I stitch some, I will show you which ones I'm stitching. So, uh, yes, if you haven't got one, I would recommend getting one. It, to me, it's a really fun, like souvenir for, um, Nashville. I think it's kind of cool just to have and see remember the lead like oh they're so cute you guys okay I won't keep looking through it because it's not fair but it does it does go through and list everybody who is in the cookbook on the back there too and where to find their charts there are some really really good ones in there and then when I was ordering I noticed that they still had one from last year and I never I never got last year's so I saw it and I snatched it up real quick because I um I wanted to have the both of them. So I think going forward, I'm going to make sure I get one every year because yes, please. But again, some really cute charts. I love the home recipes. When we were in school, we used to do this too. We used to, um, our classes and stuff like the school would put together a cookbook and you'd have like your baby photos in there and stuff and your favorite family recipes. When you get a cookbook that's compiled from a bunch of different people, um, you know that they're putting in their favorite recipe, like their go to family recipe. So you, right then and there, that's like a sell to me because nobody's going to put in a recipe that they haven't tried or don't like live and die by, right? Like this is probably everybody's like wholehearted, like true go-to recipe. So I cannot wait to try some of the things in here. I'm going to give it to my mom and just be like, here, make something. No. <laughs> she, she did. She would make this if I asked her to, cause she loves lemon too. <laughs> no. Um, Yes, I will let you guys know as I try recipes or stitch things, um, which ones I'm trying. Okay, so Missy and Kathy from Two Needles Pulling Thread are actually doing a um, stitch along for this. So it they have a hashtag um, Market24 Cook-Off Sal. So I think it's super fun. Um, if you're trying recipes or stitching anything from here, use that hashtag tag Missy and Kathy, um, and share because I, I just think it's so cool. I think that's a great idea, um, to include the actual aspect of trying the different recipes, which ones are your favorite, which ones have you tried? Um, and I think in their floss tube too, Kathy said, like, even if it's a fail, post it. And I think that's really great too, is like to just also like <laughs> post anything, right? Like whether we try it or not like it's kind of like that nailed it or failed it kind of thing so <laughs> I think that's a great idea um I love it I love it I love it so if you guys are doing anything from this make sure you're um tagging them in it I will be following along and seeing what everybody is doing because I think it's a great idea um like I say there's so much good in here and I cannot wait to see everybody's oh this is this is really sweet <laughs> mm, see lemon pound cake yep done but there's a lot of a lot of really good things I think um 
Missy said she tried, there's an Alfredo chicken rest lasagna recipe in here and she said it was delicious. Um, yes, I'm going to have to go through and actually make some of the things. So that's it though for haul, right? Yes. I feel like I got more. I probably did. I just, half the time my stuff just goes in stash. So thank you for, um, spending time with me today. If you guys have any questions, don't forget to put them in the box below and you can, um, enter those giveaways. Just don't say any of the giveaway words. Okay. So either one, two, three, four, or five. All right. Until next time, happy stitching and hi guys, I am back. Um, so just after I finished recording, I got my delivery notification that my parcel made it today. So I am so excited. I got the goodies. Um, I don't even remember what I ordered. So let's have a look. All I know is that my chart that I was waiting for is in here. So here it is. Um, Strength and Dignity by um, the Proper Stitcher, so Annie. And isn't it beautiful? So this is the stitch along that we're doing for um, Stephanie, the New England Stitcher's birthday, which is April 1st, same day as my grandma. And grandma will be 96 this year. She loves pink. When she moved into her apartment, she painted her bathroom pink, had to have the pink shower curtain, you know, all the accessories. So I just love this. And um, the phrase and saying could not be more perfect too. So it says, she is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. So I love this and I cannot wait to start it um, with my friend Stephanie and all of our other friends that are joining in. Um, if you guys want to join along too, if you got this chart at market, um, feel free to join. It'll be so much fun to see everybody stitch it. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to do mine on some of that new um, 20 count Ada and stitch it into a pillow finish. So um, I think it calls for, yeah, 36 count. So. I can't wait. I'm so excited and I'm so happy it made it because um, starting it on the actual day means so much more to me. So, so excited. And then the rest is a bunch of fabric that I got. So I went from having not a lot of haul. I mean, I didn't go wild, but I got a lot of the um, little pieces because sometimes they've got the little... They have the little small um, pieces and I just like to get these because they are um, a nice way to try out new fabrics and stuff and especially for like different colors and things like that. So this is um, like it's just a little, you know, small, small enough for a good little project, but um, it gives you this is a really pretty color, really pretty pink. So this is watermelon ice um, and this is fox and rabbits. So I've never actually stitched on their linen before um, and I wanted to try it because everybody loves it. So uh, what better way to do it than to pick up little pieces. I, some of this stuff is really hard to get, you know. Um, so picture this plus. This one is Ren Lugana. What was this one? I didn't even say. Did I say it? I said it was linen. Um, 36 count. So, and then this is 28 count Ren. That's a beautiful color. I always hear on uh, lots of floss tubes that people love this color. I can see why. That's a really nice neutral. Okay, let's keep going. This will be a fun little... Oh, I got some more. So they must have had... I think I probably was like, oh, everybody loves that color. I'll get two these are really good um price price point too for the little pieces but honestly like best way to find or to try out the different fabrics and colors and stuff so there we go that's another 28 love that um this is 28 oh springfield Sh um sage lugana Uh, it doesn't have a 
it must be Zweigart, I'm assuming, because it doesn't have a, but that is really pretty. It is, it's more of a gray um, with just a little green. It's so hard to get the true color on camera, but um, beautiful. That's a really, really pretty color. I could totally see doing um, a green design on that to like really pop out that green tone to it. That would be another one that would be really pretty for the B. Um, okay, keep going. We got some light taupe. I love light taupe, so anytime there's any like little piece of it, I'll pick some up um, because they're usually a good price, the little scrap pieces. So this is a 28 count. Oh yeah, I needed more 28 count for, cause I love, see I got another big um, chunk of the light taupe in 28 and another one. <laughs> um, love gingerbread. I have not used this for any like design charts yet, but I plan on it because it is beautiful. So I got that in a 28 Lugana and that's picture this plus gingerbread. Such a pretty color. Love that. Ooh, this is beautiful. Picture this plus. Um, 28 count glacier. Now I have, I think it's picture this plus that people often say, um, stitches at a smaller count. So it says that it's, that's not quite showing right. This is picking up more like bluey, like baby bluey, but it's, it's definitely more turquoise there. That kind of maybe shows the turquoise green tones to it. Anyways, it's gorgeous. That's really pretty. I love the modeling in it too. Okay, we got some more Springfield Sage. So, and that's 28 count. Ooh, look at that. Picture this plus vellum. That's really pretty. For like a very aged weather. Oh, I like that. That's, that's really pretty. Okay, we're gonna have to think of a fun project for that. Um, what do we have? Whisper. And this one doesn't say the make. So again, it must be a Zweigert. Um, Whisper Lugana, 28 count. And that's a soft gray. <clears throat> fiber on the whim fiber on a whim mint that's pretty very pretty that is um, a 20 count Ada as well and then we've got 18 count vintage country mocha I wanted to try some um, of the 18 it's been a while since I've done 18. I used to, when I first started stitching, I would usually do two strands of um, floss on 18 count Ada, um, but I want to try some with the one strand as well because I've never really played around with it that much. Um, 18 count Ada and the mint as well. Um, I love mint. Anything kind of like in the minty greens and blues. I love so I wanted to try that I always find it hard to find like a good oh this one's gorgeous picture this plus Jade Ada 18 count oh my goodness I love this this is pretty this is just a little softer than the fiber on a whim mint but it's kind of in that same family, but oh my goodness, and look at that modeling in there. So pretty. I wish this was a bigger piece, <laughs> so tiny. Um, but it is an 18 count, so I'll still have plenty on there to get a good stitch in. And then this is a really fun color. Um, fiber on a whim, 
hibiscus. I think I thought this was going to be more pink, but it's definitely like rusty. The undertone is pink and then that marbling on top is quite rusty. So there's, there's a little bit more of a, oh wow, that's okay. See that, that's a, this, this section here is quite pink. And then there's quite a bit of marbling down like on that section. I don't know if it's showing, yeah. So that's got some pretty big blotchy marbling. It's quite the difference between the two halves. So here is quite orangey. Like that really looks like a coffee tea dye or coffee tea um, dyeing marbling almost like where it's so dark. And then there's that, which is like really light and pink. I love this color peachy pink um but yeah the dark dark marbling over top kind of little rusty it's quite heavy that section so it's it's really it feels like two different kinds of fabric there once you open it up so not sure what I'm gonna do on that one um like I say this the sides are just so different um, yeah, we'll have to see. So I don't know if it shows on camera. Maybe if I do it like this. Okay. So see that side compared to that side. All right, so that's hibiscus. All right, well, that was it for the package I was waiting on. And then um, I had a Michael's order that came in too. So um, that my husband ever so nicely went and picked up for me. Um, <laughs> so I just got a couple of the bundles because they were on sale and these are the greatest thing ever. They're, they're trim bundles. They're on 50% off right now. Um, and they have like pom-pom, you've got different kinds of ribbon in there. This one's like a velvety, um, one lace, uh, mini pom, like Rick Rack. Look at this Rick Rack is really, it's like a natural Rick Rack. So super fun. Um, they've had the blue one and then the pastels. Look at these like Easter. Um, so we've got the pink palm, there's yellow, uh, we've got this one, super fun, um, all kinds, ooh, I like this, that's a fun one too, and laces, and rickrack, oh, that one's fun too, look at the little, um, ruffle, do you see that? Anyways, super cute. Love them. These are great. Um, always keep an eye out for those because you get, like, this was like $10 for all that. Like, that's a lot. It takes a while to find the right projects, but they're good to have on hand. So, um, yeah, that was just a fun little, I got a pack of paint as well. So, because um, I want to do some painting. It's been a while since I've got out, um, done a canvas painting so I wanted to do that and um, I needed a few new colors so I just got a pack because there was a good coupon so there we go that was my little surprise so I am starting the stitch along on Monday the first if you're gonna join um, let me know all right hope everybody has a great day happy Easter um, enjoy your weekend whether you're celebrating with your family or just um, having a nice relaxing stitchy weekend. So take care until I talk to you next time. Um, happy stitching everyone. Thank you for joining me today. You can find me on Instagram or Facebook at Erin Elizabeth Designs. 
And if you enjoyed what I had to share, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. You can also turn on the little bell to be notified for my next video.